in a world where nostalgia rages across the land, where everyone and their mother has a podcast, where there's still a movie trailer guy who says, in a world. Three friends revisit films, shows, and games that molded them as they search for answers to life, the universe, and everything in between. Settle in and join us for Screen Refresh. So welcome to whatever episode number this is of Screen Refresh. We're like six in and I've already forgotten that number. I don't want to set the precedent of that something I'm going to do every episode because that means I'm going to have to keep track of it. Uh, so Good idea. for anybody new to this and anybody old to this, uh, as you know, we are three friends who, uh, myself, Tim Fenoya, am on the East Coast with my co-hosts, whoever would like to go first. Hello there. This is Nick. Is it my cue? That's the, that's your cue. Oh yeah, it's it's Dean. I'm Dean. <laughs> I'm on the hi, West Coast. Hi, hi, Dean from West Coast. So, uh, as you know, all of us are kind of scattered around. Uh, well, Dean's scattered around. We're all on the East Coast. So we just kind of take a look at all of the movies we grew up on. Some of the ones that we may not have grown up on. We just saw later in life that kind of had an effect on us. And just try to take another look at them, see if there's anything that we originally loved about them still kind of holds up there. If there's anything that we loved about it that we realize our tastes have changed or we just had poor judgment back in the day. So if you've listened to any of our previous episodes, you know this whole gist. So today we're going to be talking about what movie? Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Now this is one you chose, Nick, so I will I will release the reins to you. So... so- Second viewing, I didn't like it. How did y'all? How did y'all initially feel about this? I mean, like as a kid, or like this second viewing. Either or. Open discussion. I mean, is this your second viewing? Is in like you saw it once as a kid, or you used to watch it a bunch as a kid, and this is the second like? Well, I haven't seen this since childhood, so I saw it a bunch as a kid. Oh, okay. I grew up. I you know a lot of scenes really stand out and i remember quite a bit of it but i can only remember like the actual beats of the movie like oh the kids shrink down you know there's the the oatmeal cookie there's the bee there's you know the big scorpion and then the big turkey dinner you know and that's that's really it (laughs) for the whole rest of it like i couldn't tell you the people's names you know the actual motivations and like certain characters or anything at all so it was almost like i was watching it for the first time but having like, I don't know, watch the trailer, like a modern trailer for it or, or, or something, because there I remember things, but I have no idea what the blanks were or like there was a lot of blanks in between. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those movies that kind of got lost to the ether of time in my head of I remember being aware of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And I remember sitting down and watching it a couple times as a kid. But other than maybe one, like this, as you said, the scene with the cookie, the scene with Scorpion, the scene with the ant, those are the only things that I remembered until now. And I remember not really caring for it as a kid and rewatching it now. I actually, it's better than I remember. Um, I would agree. Yeah. Same idea. Just scenes, set pieces stick out in your head. Um, I when I saw the cookie, I was like, "Oh yeah!" Like I completely forgotten about the cookie. I didn't remember the turkey dinner at the end at all. <laughs> but I once I saw the turkey, I thought it was gonna. It was like it kind of looked like Auntie, the dead ant. Um, I was like, "Real, this is really <laughs> fucked up." They made the ant big, and now they're eating it. Um, I, really, I thought they were calling him Anthony at first, and I was gonna be like, "Oh, is this where Ant Man got it?" When they had the one ant he called Anthony. And then they're like, I turn the subtitles on, and it's like anti, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> um, yeah, I like. I'm gonna be honest. I don't have a whole lot of notes because, like, I just I started taking notes at the beginning, and then I'm just like, I'm just watching this movie. Like, I'm, I don't know. I, I dug it. I dug it this time around. My notes were kind of similar. Like, I I did the whole like the thing that we do, and I included my notes kind of baked into it, but. Overall, there really wasn't a lot of like big points to it. My gripes with it are pretty much right in the beginning and um, we'll cover it. But I just wanted to hear what you guys initially thought of, because like I said, this is something I hadn't hadn't seen since a kid. And um, having 
fresh eyes watching it as an adult, it was really interesting to see the difference between how I looked at it as a child versus now. And there is a huge, huge um, difference between the two. Yeah, I think I have a much bigger appreciation for it now, especially like looking at the set design and looking at the practical effects work that they did with it, which it looked amazing. Yeah, it like it holds up. Right. Like, granted, there's like a couple scenes here and there where you can obviously tell like, oh, that's the um, overlay with a background and whatnot. But for the most part, like all of this looks great. Yeah, the um, the uh, production design on all of the small sets, the bigatures, I don't know, yeah, that's not what you call it, but <laughs> I think they look, yeah, they look great. Like they added a, a lot of really good detail and um, I was surprised it looked that good, I guess. But it is Disney. I mean, they got, they have money. I forgot it but, was Disney. Um, yeah. Well, it like depends I, on the Disney movie too, because some of them, it's like, is this going to be a theatrical run? All right, let's throw more money at it. Is it going to be meant for TV only or... Is it Mr. Boogity? Um, VHS. <laughs> then it's like, all right, well, you know, give them the TV budget. And this one definitely had the major motion picture budget that they don't normally do for some of their other titles. Yeah, I forgot it was Disney. I ended up renting it on Amazon the other day to watch it and then... Um, got sidetracked, did something else, and then it was the next day and it had expired the rental because I started it. But then because I remembered it was Disney, I just went on Disney Plus and watched it. So anybody that's out there um, looking to watch along with these or whatever the case is, like this one is found on Disney Plus. It seems to be the only streaming location currently. I'll try to figure out like any of the future movies we do or if we release any of the, the previous episodes. I'll try to mention where you might be able to find it easily. Um, cause I know like usually I just use just watch. So it's makes life a little simpler. We'll set up a private, uh, torrenting server and try not to get caught. Yeah. We'll send these movies right to you from our own collection. So just keep your DL on the DL. <laughs> use a VPN, everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So is that going to be our first sponsor? <laughs> <clears throat> Live reads. I know we're missing that Express VPN sponsorship. <laughs> Express VPN, not, get at us. We're not uh, the cool kids yet, so we have that. Oh, I know you However, guys were being what? Oh, I was gonna say I know when we were talking about the the special effects and the practical effects and whatnot. This actually was nominated for a couple Saturn Awards. Uh, one of them being Best Special Effects, which it ended up losing to Back to the Future Part Two that same year. Yeah. Which I think Back to the Future 2, I love the movie. As far as special effects go, I feel like this one kind of had more going for it. Like, aside from the car actually disappearing in Back to the Future 2, I don't recall a lot of special effects. Um, well, they had the there's future. The jaws. There's Jaws oh, coming out. Oh, that's true. I completely hologram. forgot about. Yeah. Marty flying. The car flying. The hoverboard. I, that's a practical special effect but the hoverboard and everything i guess yeah that's just probably on a reason a wire but yeah mm. i take it back future we'll have to car. watch back to the future part two <laughs> at some point so this movie does start with um an animated segment which i hadn't seen the likes of in a long time just follows a pair of animated kids running for their lives in a shrunken state household norms coming perilously close to them while they're trying to survive did any of you guys get like a, a Roger Rabbit feel? Because I could have sworn like, didn't another movie have a Roger Rabbit opening? Um, It did kind of have the a Roger Rabbit or it felt kind of like a Bobby's World. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Howie Mandel connection. No, I could have sworn <laughs> like there was another Disney movie that had an actual Roger Rabbit opening. Almost like... um. You mean mixing humans and cartoons? No, or? literally, like, it's Roger Rabbit. I don't know. I have no idea. Really? I could have sworn there was another, like, early Disney movie that had it. I just can't remember why. It's almost like, um, like Gremlins 2 having, like, the, the what's it called? Um, the Looney Tunes kind of open for them. Similar that Roger Rabbit had done so also. But Actually, I'm not sure if this right. one was it or another one. Yeah. The um, It was called Roger Rabbit Tummy Trouble, and it was released before 
Honey, I Shrunk the Kids theatrically and on the film's video release. I, I knew it. <laughs> you really did see this. No, because I'm like, I watched it. I'm like, I could have sworn like I had a Roger Rabbit feeling the whole time. I think that's what it was. And so the back of my mind, I'm waiting to see that segment. And it was never there because I had it on VHS. Must have been the same animators. Maybe they hired to do the opening. I kind of wish that they had, even on the, on the Disney Plus streaming, that they would still lead with that or have the option of watching it with that. Because I know there were a lot of things for like the VHSs and whatnot that had fun stuff that kind of is missed out on. Because now it's, you stream it, you jump directly into the movie, you miss out on any of that kind of extra or previous stuff or whatever the case may be. Right. I, I tuned out a little bit for the opening. I was like, oh, it's a, an animated intro. OK. Yeah, I didn't really kind of I didn't feel it foreshadowed anything. It was just kind of a fun thing to yeah. do before the whole movie started. There's an art. There's an art to some movies with their opening titles and some movies just don't do anything at all. They just get going. But love the score, though. The score is fun. Yeah. Has that kind of very like uh, classic movie jazzy sound to it. I mean, it's it's very... 80s Disney. Big time. I actually thought it was almost early 90s and I had to look it up to see it was 89. So 89. <clears throat> you at least know? at the time of release, because you figure they probably didn't film it, edit and then release it in the span of a week. So they probably was like mid 80s when it was all done. It got beat out at the box office by a little movie called Tim Burton's Batman. Also released June 23rd in 1989. <laughs> Never mm. heard of it. You know, the weekend after Ghostbusters 2 opened. We don't talk about that one. I mean, 1989, June in 1989 was like a solid month for movies. We had, what, Warlock with uh, Julian Sands, Dead Poet Society with Robin Williams. Spike that was Lee's 89? The right. Yep. All I thought that June. was like early 90s. Nope. Spike huh. Lee's Do the Right Thing. Uh, Dennis Quaid's Great Balls of Fire, which, I mean... After I the other ones, what that is. not as much. Uh, <laughs> Great Balls of Fire was the biopic, I think, of Jerry Lee Lewis, the uh, musician. It's a good movie. So, yeah, a lot of interesting ones going on during that time, but definitely makes sense that it didn't beat out Batman. Slightly, slightly different audience, although the same kids that see Shrunk the Kids probably want to see Batman, but it's a, obviously it's a well, those kids slightly were going older to see crowd. <laughs> You know, the scene when he eats that guy's tongue or they pound the nails through him? Never saw it. I'm sure that's what they were there for, though. <laughs> Let's really get that uh, 8 to 12 demographic. Also, I didn't know... Um, I forgot that Joe Johnston directed this. Oh, yes. yes. That was one of his first ones. Yeah. I mean, he... It was his first directing credit. Yeah. I believe. This was his first directing release. Followed, or well, I don't know, follow it up, but like after he ended up doing Rocketeer, which at some point I'm definitely going to pick. Um, if you guys remember Page Master, he yeah, did with then, Macaulay Culkin. Yep. Then he did Jumanji, he did October Sky, and then yada, 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 he did Jurassic Park 3. Um, <laughs> he did what he could. He did good. That was a mess. I actually would like to talk about that one at one point, but not because I liked it. Alan. <laughs> There was more of um, <laughs> behind the scenes fiasco than anything else. That would be more fun to delve it, into. It, it's just more interesting to hear the story behind how it was made versus the, the final product. The final product wasn't that good. I feel like some of those, like the Jurassic Park ones and whatnot, or like Back to the Future, those would be fun to do as like a um, multiple mini episode of covering the entire trilogy um, as opposed to three normal length but i mean that's all that's inside baseball we can get to that another time i don't want to talk about batman um forever or batman and robin individually they really need to be lumped into one big sum yeah i'd agree <laughs> with that hey i i loved batman forever and batman and robin but all i right, think it's so it's stockholm the movie syndrome. opens with the mailman going along his route and then delivering to the Zelensky's mailbox and you see the camera pants down and then we see the dog. The dog is able to take the mail like a good little dog in all those Disney movies right over to the kitchen. And in here we see the youngest child, Nick, 
he's um he's recreating his father's newest invention or at least that's what we're assuming because when we look around we also see a bunch of other um inventions scattered throughout the entire kitchen and it's almost like sorry but like billy peltzer's dad from gremlins that's the first thing that came to mind except these are successful (laughs) so that everything actually works so the little like retroactive like switch thing that's able to make coffee you hit it and actually makes the coffee you want instead of pouring out black sludge like, is it a trope that every movie where the father's an inventor, they have to have literally every <laughs> single thing as an invention in their house? They like, only, she doesn't. They only marginally increase the efficiency yeah, for some. It's like the phone rings. <laughs> she picks the phone up, and then the device like flips it for her, so she's able to start talking. And it's like, really? <laughs> I don't. I don't get why that. Some of the inventions are even there. Like later on in the movie, I'll I'll glaze over it in my notes, but it, there's a treat dispenser that's activated by the dog. What dog that's smart enough to know if I push this button, I'll get a treat wouldn't just empty the whole thing in one sitting. <laughs> yeah. Or they pan to the clock at one point and there's all this machinery hooked up to the cat clock. And I'm just wondering, what is it do? Is that just powering the clock or like, what's the goal there? I think it's a loudspeaker. I think we'll, ah, okay. That I think we'll find sense. out later on that Cork has a keen perception and is not a normal dog. I think we find out later that Cork is the only good parent in this household. <laughs> <laughs> like we're at like little monsters level of uh, ineptitude with the <laughs> right. the parents. <laughs> so At least with Dad. <clears throat> the oldest child, who is actually a teenager, Amy, um, she's on the phone and she's talking with one of her friends. And apparently... Mom and Dad had an argument last night and Mom spent the night at Grandma's. Like she just needed a rest. That's kind of a big deal. And then throughout the whole rest of the movie, it seemed it's really kind of dialed back and tame. Or at least I thought so. I don't. I feel like they don't even really say, like, what, is he like focusing too much on work like i don't know if they really Dean, hit on i know they have the a heart to heart later <laughs> <laughs> that was after the fact <laughs> well because the way that he's treating the whole invention and how he gets so frustrated that it doesn't work and he has that conference that he goes to and it's like hey how's the conference oh it's later today or like you know how's the conference oh it didn't go so well like i'm assuming it was a lot of stress leading up to that point of the yeah. conference of him showing off the shrink ray But with them having an argument, if I got into an argument with my significant other to the point where she wants to stay at her mom's house, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't imagine that coming from someone like Rick Moranis. He is prone to violence, though, as we see with his frustration. That is true. He comes back in and just smashes his machine with a (laughs) broom handle or something, whatever it was. Gosh, darn it. (laughs) Well, I mean, like, I can understand if they're having problems in their marriage, considering that he knows this device in the attic. The only thing he's been able to accomplish is it destroys and blows up everything it touches. Oh, like his marriage. And then he just, like, leaves it upstairs where his kids live. (laughs) Doors unlocked. Like, clearly there's some there's some concerns there. I would have sold it to the (laughs) military at that point. Yeah. Like, well, it's a shrink ray. Does it work? No, but I mean, it can disintegrate whatever you put in front of it. It's a death ray. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to just the addition of a baseball can drastically change your customer. (laughs) I guess that's the difference between this movie being made by Disney versus if it was made by 20th Century Fox. (laughs) But also, I haven't seen a corded phone in years until this movie. It was kind of nice. The whole movie really brought back like memories of childhood seeing all that like retro stuff and now there's not even phones in the house (laughs) yeah those kind of phones or or at all (laughs) cut the lines no phones i'm getting getting the chip implanted as soon as it's available (laughs) (laughs) which straight to my brain so with amy mentioning that the parents are fighting um Before she hangs up the phone, she actually like hits a button for a paging system, which I thought was kind of cool. And then that's when the camera decides to go up and see what's going on with him. So her father, Wayne Zielinski, who's played by Rick Moranis, is the inventor of the family, working on this massive gun looking thing. So again, I don't get why he was so upset 
that the shrink ray didn't work because it already looks like a deadly laser. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the military would love this thing. And considering how he was acting and like his interaction with his neighbor, I feel like he's one day away from flipping that thing out the window and just starting to fire on the town. Like, <laughs> yeah. Big Ross, Matt Brewer across the street, I know they set him up to be like the the worst father of the two, but I feel like he's the more realistic human being. And it's kind of understandable that he gets frustrated with Rick Moranis when this guy is like early in the morning on a Saturday, banging away up in his attic. Zelensky, give it a rest, it's Saturday! Or later how he abducts and shrinks his kids by accident. <laughs> he's very, he's very restrained when he look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I never liked that in movies, how you will see, like, knowing how IT works. And I'm no engineering master, but just putting, like, a freaking blowtorch in a weld gun against a metal, like, electronic device, and that's how you expect it to work. Or that's the movie trope to show that he's working on something electrical. (laughs) Because all you see him doing is just, like, soldering, like, wires together but it's not even on a circuit board it's just he's doing it against the side of the machine and just i I don't know that (laughs) stupid little stuff it's like i hate that trope so what you're saying is the science doesn't check out on this device (laughs) clearly not obviously no wonder why none of this shit's working he's soldering the wrong part (laughs) but the gun is cool it's very the whole shrink ray is an iconic thing and for it being like the like the icon of the movie it really still stands out to this day because and you can you could see it in a lineup and you'll instantly know like oh that's the shrink ray from honey i shrunk the kids yeah and i thought they did a really good job of this set design and or not the set design but like the prop design for this specific um movie yeah absolutely it kind of reminded me of the the ray itself reminded me of like ghostbusters like it had that same kind of homemade feel it's just like a stationary proton pack. <laughs> yeah, I guess just the way that it looks homemade, but like prototypey. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just gave me that vibe. It looked good. I guess with Rick Moranis standing there, like, yeah, I couldn't help but think of Ghostbusters. Is this when they um, actually is this when Big Ross ends up waking up because of the stuff going on next door? Yeah, we finally meet Max Headroom. <laughs> And he gets real angry with Rick Moranis because he's waking him up so early on a Saturday. Yeah, but I want some sleep. We got a four-hour drive ahead of us. And I think you should have some consideration for other people. Mm, give the guy a break. I'll give him a break. I'll break his arm. I love seeing Matt Frewer show up in movies. Between, like, this, Watchmen, Dawn of the Dead, The Stand, uh, Hercules. Like, it, it's... He always has a fun performance. Yeah, he's a good character guy. Yeah. Also, I like I how... I actually forgot he was in Watchmen. Yeah. He was um, Moloch. Moloch. Yeah, I like how when he's talking with his wife um, about Little Russ, and he says if he wants to feel big, he should act big, and I feel like that should have come with like dramatic music behind it, or like an ominous uh, foreshadowing tone. <laughs> I thought it was funny through the whole movie that his relationship with his oldest son almost reminded me of like from a goofy movie (laughs) and that he just wanted to be a part of his older son's life. But the kid is obviously not wanting to play football or go fishing or do anything that his father wanted to do. Yeah, I feel like overall, like Big Russ and Little Russ, it wasn't a case of like, oh, he's an overbearing father or like they have major problems. It's like they never really had any big drag out fights or anything it was just a very realistic i want my kid to like the things i like and i can clearly see that i'm losing my grip on him i know they play it for laughs but it's like yeah that's one of the more realistic relationships throughout the film writers trying to sneak that in there for you (laughs) so in the beginning of the movie there's just a lot of i guess back and forth it's just trying to catch every like the viewer up with like what everyone is doing and meeting them for the first time so <clears throat> pretty much once we meet Big Russ, we hear him angry and he runs outside um, just to yell at Rick Moranis because he woke him up on the Saturday. Um, as he runs outside, he we get to meet his younger son, Ron. 
And um, he's setting up a trap for <laughs> trespassers, I, I guess. From the Predator and... School of Improvised uh, Weapons. <laughs> Pull the dad. Don't move. Ron, what are you doing? Defend in the backyard, dad. That's my fishing rod. Dad, stop. Oh. Dad. He this walks the... in right into uh, this trap, just gets a one of those um, arrows Suc- with a suction, suction cup. arrow, yeah. With super glue, because I, I always try to get those things to like hit and land and him putting super glue on it, I think is brilliant and terrible. What's on this thing? Super glue. Super glue. Got to mark those trespassers, Dad. I'm not a trespasser. I'm your father. Never wash it off the problem with that is you have to load the super glue immediately before it's shot or it's going to dry, you know? Yeah, but like what if that hit him in the why eye? Do you, why do you have a trap set up if you have to watch it all the time and be ready with the super glue, you know? I'm just here to pick apart his trap designs. That's well, and that's the only all. time we see him use a trap, right? <laughs> You're like I think it's not like we watched it later. He sets up a trap later on in the movie, but they don't, it's it. A, I think it's stupid to set up like a trap that's meant to like get a small dog when you're dealing with a scorpion <laughs> the size of an elephant. <laughs> I thought about that too. Yeah, like I, I thought I misremembered it and it was going to be like, oh yeah, later on they have to use his trap making skills for, and it's like, nah, not really. It's just kind of a throwaway thing to introduce him. Yeah, he's more into the, in baseball, like a, why, why the traps as well, I don't know. Although I think overall they give, they do a good job in the beginning of kind of showing you all the individual kids' personalities and whatnot. Yeah, they get through, I think it's pretty well written. I think overall it's a decently written movie yeah and they, yeah. they get going pretty quick i'd say and i was very amused by um the little kid nick with the lab coat and whatnot huck finning the uh the neighbor kid tommy <laughs> 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 i'll let you pay me to mow my lawn i do like how he was able to turn it around i'm sick of all the nerdy kids being the brunt of all the the jokes in this case he's actually able to turn it right back around every time well, plus he has so many lines that are just thrown away in the background that are hilarious. Like when, um... Hey, Zelensky. Ever do anything normal? Like play baseball? Nope. <laughs> Baseball's for mortals. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I'm like, I'm going to use that from now on whenever he's like, you catch the game? Baseball's for mortals. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, like, Nick's into science, Ron's into baseball, and li- big, or, uh... Little Ross is into looking through girls. people's windows and watching girls. Mm. She was dancing funny. Yeah, I at first I was like, is this creepy? Then I was like, eh, he's just attracted to her. And he's like, I think she's pretty. I don't know. That's he's the same I age. Did. It's, a, it's yeah. okay if you're the same age. <laughs> I, I mean, it's still, it's still weird. If he was just walking past the way of the trash and he noticed, and he was like, oh, huh. But when, like, he's standing there long enough just looking through the window that Big Russ comes out and finds him and is like, well, I lost him. He found women. (laughs) But I liked how instead of belittling him or, like, getting him back into the game of baseball, at least he was like, hey, you know, if you want to pick up girls, this is how you do it. You know, start working (laughs) out and then they'll just come at you. And I kind of appreciated on how at least, like, he's still trying to connect with his son. Yeah, it's just like, okay, so you're not interested in this. Let's pivot. What are you interested in that I can help you out with? Like, it's yeah. it's good. I didn't even realize he was, like, small. Like, he, if they see, they seems like they make him out to be not a tall kid. Like, he's undersized. I remember, like, as a kid, specifically for some reason before I watched this, I was like, I remember that character, the older brother, Russ. And I was like, when I was that, when I was younger watching it, I was like, he's like a like a 35 year old man in my memory. Like he's like this big, (laughs) like tall jock. I don't remember anything about the working out and stuff, but I just so weird seeing him now. Like it's like, Oh yeah, he looks like he's 15. (laughs) Yeah. And I like how big Ross is like, yeah, I used to lift weights and I put on 45 pounds of muscle to take down quarterbacks. And I'm like, then where'd it go? (laughs) End of the movie pulls his shirt off and he's just ripped like duct tape. (laughs) This is a really bad cut to a double, like <laughs> like an Arnold Schwarzenegger size. It's just cropped, so you just see from like the the waist <laughs> to the bottom of the neck, nothing else. <laughs> so yeah, I think what that's when yeah, because that's when upstairs. we end up having Ron hit the uh, the thing through the window at that point. He goes, nope. he goes up to talk you to are, Dad. Right? You are flash forwarding. So 
<clears throat> Max Headroom gets mad because of the the dart to the head. He storms back in. And then we cut back to Wayne, who's actually going to test out the machine for the first time in front of the viewers. So that's when we get to see that this thing doesn't work. And it's a deadly, deadly weapon instead. <laughs> so he fires it up. You see him pulling knobs, twisting levers. Stay back, boy. If this thing works, this will put us right up there with the invention of electricity. First man in space. On the other hand, we've come up with an interesting way of making applesauce. This movie is one baseball away from Honey, I Killed Your Kids. <laughs> <laughs> what if that would have happened? going to jail. Oh my god. Like, <laughs> it, what if the events of that day happened exactly as it did, except instead of the ball getting stuck in the machine, it just rolled off down onto the ground. Yeah, or it f went in and hit the machine to have it start rotating while it was on. And it just starts blasting through all the walls. <laughs> the neighborhood gets disintegrated. Which the, the, um, oh, that's something I skipped over. So the two of the guys who did the story for this movie um, are Stuart Gordon and Brian Usna, which is baffling because they're the two that did, um, like, Reanimator, From Beyond, Necronomicon, um, just like a S Dagon society. So, like, a string of cult horror movies. And then they did the story for this that it threw me because it's the equivalent of being, like, Wes Craven's Toy Story. Like, just a, a weird mishmash. And they did another movie called From Beyond that was based loosely on a um, H.P. Lovecraft story but the whole thing was a mad scientist creating a machine in his attic that ends up, like, breaking into another world and bringing things over. And I feel like that was... They came up with the same start to a story and then just decided, eh, we'll use it for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And then, eh, we'll use it from From Beyond and just use it again. Rick Moranis is one bad day away from opening that machine up in his attic to uh, supervillain levels. <laughs> So anybody out there interested in Stuart Gordon and Brian Hughes there? I guess, if, I mean, if you got an idea, you know, if it's, they had a good idea, maybe. And then it's just like, yeah, let's roll with it. I know it's not our bag, baby. But, it's too uh, bad Lovecraft stuff never really kind of makes it out into pop culture. Because it always seems like they try, but it really just fades away and doesn't really make a as much of an impact as like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Yeah, it's always like at best... Uh, cult status like reanimator or if they had their way it probably would have been a very different movie for that thing to kick on and just blow the kids up <laughs> that would have sucked <laughs> just frick moranis comes upstairs Aye! credits yeah i actually had that notion of like after the kids actually shrink and he comes up and doesn't see them like he just steps on them at that point and then later on has his realization after investigation and, and looks at his shoes and they're just like little bones just like <laughs> just splattered. Or if they shrink but it's like a man shoe. so they still retain the strength of their normal size. He steps on them all of them just throw them across the room. <laughs> Break his neck. <laughs> oh my god. He's the only one that can work the machine. <laughs> Other than Nick. Yeah it could have gone a very different direction. Very it's clearly easy. Nick seems very to quickly. know his machine better than Wayne knows his machine. Yeah, I feel like when he comes up to see his dad, like, the cat's in the cradle starts playing in my mind. He's like, yeah, 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 I'm busy. <laughs> you know, Dad, I was calculating. If you took all the molecules Listen, in Listen, Nick, house... I gotta get this thing working before I leave. Why don't you go help your sister? Once the applesauce scene happens, we go back to Big Russ trying to clean the arrow that's super glued to his head, which is the fastest acting super glue I've seen in my life. But this is where we get to meet his older son, Russ Jr. And um, we get to see that dynamic in their relationship where he just big Russ wants him to be playing sports, going out there, being a go get him. And just the kid really doesn't want any of that. Well, look who's decided to join the land of the living. And is Russell ready for his big fishing trip? Not really, Dad. Not really. There's a big fish out there with your name on it. Fishing's your thing, Dad, not mine. Well, what's the matter with him? What do you mean, shush? I see nothing wrong with wanting to take my son fishing. 
I feel like Big Russ is the better dad than Wayne. Big Russ wants to be involved in his kid's life. Wayne is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm busy. That's Go where away. I think some of that, that, um, like the, the drama is between Wayne and his wife, Diane, because I, th I think that probably was brought up just behind, you know, closed doors that the viewer couldn't see. Because it, it, like, realistically, I mean, for your wife to sleep at your parents' house is a, at her parents' house is usually the cause of a really bad argument. Yeah, that's and not... seeing their marriage doesn't strike me as that they could ever have an argument that bad to the point where she's like, you know what? I'm going at my mother's house. And like, holy shit. So he probably is a really neglectful dad. Or they had three kids and this machine is in its second prototype. <laughs> He was lasered. <laughs> any, uh, any luck with that machine? Nope. Still Aposloss. And then it's just flashbacks <laughs> of her son all over the room. <laughs> Wayne Jr. How everybody quickly forgets and never brings him up again. <laughs> well, originally yeah, that like, was part of the Roger Rabbit short before this. That was tummy trouble. Because even, you know, like the, the experiment fails Applesauce. He goes downstairs, he packs up all of his stuff, and then he goes to the conference. And then as he's leaving, he's like... Later, listen. We gotta make this place spick and span, okay? Nick, I want you to mow the lawn. Amy, good luck. Because it seems like he's so neglectful to his family. It's like the dad I never see. The one time he talks to me, he tells me to clean the house, and then he's out the door. <laughs> yeah, I feel like for the most part, all of the kids in this movie were pretty good kids. <laughs> yeah, he's trying. He's trying to get the kids to like do what's going to make his wife happy. Like they're trying to, he's trying to get the kids to fix his problems. Yeah. Hey, I have to run to a concert or a conference, fix my marriage. <laughs> like, I mean, he's not like Daniel Stern levels of bad in little monsters, but it's, it's not a great look. Oh, that's the <laughs> other bit. So, <clears throat> yeah. So <clears throat> despite everything, you know, he goes downstairs and then as he's leaving to the conference, his wife calls to wish him like, good luck at the conference. What kind of an argument did you guys have? that fuck you i'm going to stay with my parents and then you call him the next day as if nothing happened yeah like and i like, didn't hey, even catch luck. that they had a fight i thought when she called and was like oh how the conference is going i thought it was just she left earlier that day to go to work no she was she stayed the night with her mom because That's they got into a fight later on like just they don't really touch on what he was doing wrong i don't yeah. think yeah no they never did they have a heart other, to heart, but like... Yeah, like other than the very beginning of the movie when Amy mentions it, they really kind of don't touch on it again until like the very end when <laughs> Amy brings it up again of like, are you guys okay now? <laughs> yeah. yeah, shared trauma fixed our marriage. <laughs> That's why rewatching this kind of set a whole different mood because I never remember that they were fighting. And because that... I guess plus me writing like as thorough notes this time around versus like offering commentary through it. I paid more attention to it. So I'm expecting more leads and hints of that faulty marriage throughout the whole rest of the movie. And it just was never there. So it just seemed really extreme that it would go as far as to say, yeah, our parents aren't doing well. And then, Hey honey, how are you? Just want to call and see you know, how the, you're, you know, are you ready for the big conference today? Like, where did the hell did this come from? Because I know if my wife were to have said something like that to me, I'm like, are you sure you're not mad at me? <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, there there are like several through lines going on at the same time, like Russ and Russ Sr., their marriage, the little love thing going on between Russ and Amy. There's a there's a lot of like character growth they're trying to show between everybody, which I guess is good, but it's I feel like other stuff just it gets thrown by the wayside and you just kind of get from point a to point b without you really seeing what's going on yeah yeah i feel it, like it overall like, wayne and diane had the weakest like i would and i would say that was movie. like the biggest like b story of the movie was their marriage or yeah. their relationship i feel like it we was, see more of big ross and his wife i think it was just they didn't know what the hell to do with the wife for the first half of the movie <laughs> so like, well, we got to get her out of the house somehow. Like, well, what if they're what if they're just not doing well and she decided to stay with her parents? There oh, we go. Well, so that what cuts her out for work? most of it. And then she finally gets in the picture and then she's like, where are the kids? 
oh, I don't know where they are. I'll, they're probably at the mall. Let me go check. And that buys them another like half an hour because it seems like she's only in the movie long enough to go on that weird spinning thing in the backyard and then the family dinner at uh, for the big turkey. And that's it. Yeah. Which I mean, like overall, especially back in the pre cell phone days, I know if I left, I definitely had to let my parents know where I was going <laughs> Because I have no way of contacting them otherwise. So the fact that everybody in this movie is just like, where are the kids? I don't know. They just disappeared. They uh, probably went to the mall. Okay, that's fine. Really? <laughs> the sense of timing is really weird in the movie, too. Because I don't know how long he was at that conference. Because it seems like he left at 8 and then he came back at like 9 a.m. and they were gone ever since. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the time well, they did go to lunch. They did go to lunch at the uh, conference. Yeah, because it was it would have been early enough that he woke up um, Big Ross and his wife because they were still in bed Saturday morning. Then he went to his conference and then got back around lunch. So I'm assuming this is all what between like eight and eleven thirty, eight and twelve, give or take. Does the the baseball thing with Ron happen? That happens before the conference, right? During. During. Oh, uh, okay. Really yeah, because he's already gone because else baseball thing would have happened while Rick was still in. Oh, true. Yeah. And he wouldn't have been as uh, happy as he's working, doing his thing. And then it's just a baseball fucking hits him on the side of the head. Right. Think back to the future, hitting the head <laughs> in the side of a toilet bowl next. <laughs> Maybe that's the big problem. He didn't have that uh, got hit in the head moment. They should have done a fun crossover and had one of the people in the background of his uh, science conference be Doc Brown. <laughs> kind of like in Gremlins, how in the background they have, um, I forgot what it is. They have like a bunch of other references to things. They have H.G. Wells Time Machine at the invention conference. The Flies Transportation Teleporter? No, I don't know. Something they can use for the, uh, the reboot that they're working on. So at this point... <clears throat> um... Wayne has the phone call with his, with his wife. He goes off to the conference. So Nick, being the smart one, he was told that he has to get the lawn done. So being the smart one, and he invites this kid over and, um, hey, can you mow my lawn for me? Uh, I'll let you mow half my yard. No, thanks. Wow. With that? Yeah. And this. <laughs> Oh, it's a remote control! Tell you what, you throw in a box of cookies, I'll let you cut the whole thing. Oh, but I have to go and meet Newt right now. Uh, could I do it later? I don't think so, because, you know, my dad's oh, gonna come, come home on. and... Okay, don't be too late. Okay, thanks. No problem. See you later! Nothing like a hard day's work. So that's a nice bit of foreshadowing that uh, the kid does not end up coming back today. Yeah, I honestly forgot about that kid. Yeah, I think it's... I mean, I knew what was going to happen because I'd seen the movie, but I thought it was a good, like, plant and payoff where you... I think most people would completely forget that they put that kid as coming back at some point to mow the lawn. You don't... Or it's like... Oh, no. Like, once you realize that kid, you see that kid coming into the yard, you're like, oh, shit. Check off the lawnmower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that lawnmower would have actually been really inefficient and caused a lot of... I would have just been pissed off at it. Just like, just give oh, me... I'll just push the A thousand percent. Thing. <laughs> like, I have a tough enough Trying time with an actual corner. RC car, much less. <laughs> I mean, I have a Roomba. For your lawn now, but I think I would rather have a remote controlled one, if you ask me. Yeah, because I feel like It'd that's one step away from maximum overdrive. It'd be fun, but I realized it took me an hour to cut the lawn as opposed to 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> be a lot less sweaty, tell you that. You sit in the shade, sit in the air conditioning and look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> so here's where uh, Ron and Nick have their, their first altercation. That the, the two kids clearly don't like each other, where it's uh, brawn versus brains, I guess. So and the thing I don't get is that whole time um, Nick was vacuuming the backyard. Why? Why was he vacuuming the backyard? I think he was picking up any rocks. So when they do the but they were like white, white, like puff balls. I don't know what they were. I think it was like giant hunks of quartz. <laughs> <laughs> like, where do they live? 
<laughs> Their backyard just is just like giant sky. rocks and uh, scorpions. It falls out of the sky. <laughs> yeah. So they get into the tussle, and then this is where the dance sequence in the kitchen happens. And then Amy's tearing it up on the dance floor while... Um, it makes it sound like a dance number, like a musical. Yep, right around the kitchen Cue counter. The dance sequence. <laughs> right when um, <laughs> Russ, the oldest, looks through the window and sees her dancing. And this is when the whole thing happens where like, hey, Russ, let me show you about lifting weights so you can get women. <laughs> that was a funny bit, though, where his dad is trying to do a bicep curl and it's like veins popping out of his head. <laughs> he can't I'm barely do an anything. Yeah. He's like, lift with your legs, not with your back. And then you hear his like spine crack on the way out. <laughs> oh my God, dad. <laughs> like, I feel like watching this nowadays, I see that scene and I'm like, I, I know that feel. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the big moment of the whole movie. So out of boredom, Ron decides to start swinging his bat with his a real baseball. And this is when he manages to hit it and go right into the attic of the Selinsky's house. He's never been good on the high outside pitch. Here he comes. Fastball is bread and butter. Grin! Slam. So then here's where we get to see the baseball bounce around the whole lab, causing sparks and, you know, hitting and damaging all the bunch of equipment before landing right inside the shrink ray. And uh, right in the path of where that laser fires that you got to see inside um, the machine itself, but not the main firing laser. Just like a side laser that I guess is needed for that whole thing. I didn't do it. Come on, hey, don't. nobody has to know. Nobody saw it but you. Let's negotiate this. You and your brother, Russ. You're supposed to think on your own brother. <laughs> Turn me in and I'll tell him what you spend your allowance on. Come on, Russ. Look, did you tell him? Or I tell him, okay? Okay. You tell him. That's, like, my exact thing was as soon as he saw it and he was like, we're gonna have to go tell them. I was like, Russ is a good, honest kid. And then I thought about it and I'm like, no, because he just had the scene where he was staring at Amy. He wants to go talk to Amy. That didn't even cross my mind. I'm like, now that you're saying it, I'm like, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although I, I guess, was like, like, oh, wow, I'm surprised the brother just, like, Let's take it. Let's snip this in the bud. Although I feel but, like uh, with the rest of little Russ's interactions with everybody else and all the other stuff throughout the movie, it seems like he could honestly just be a a good kid that way. I mean, he literally saved every other kid's life at one point. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty selfless. Yeah. Selfless people like girls, too. Or boys, you know, whatever you're into. It's just a shame he quit football. <laughs> well, he didn't quit. He got cut from the team. <laughs> Or did we, he cut? Did no, he get he cut? I, I don't Isn't remember. Isn't that a Taking Back Sunday song? Or? Cut for the team, cute without the E? Yeah. That's all. Is, is that a dated reference now? Taking Back Sunday? <laughs> Early 2000s, yeah. Sure. God, I feel old. Um, yeah, I guess he was cut. That's right. Well, they. He said he. She said he was cut. Oh, and then yeah, later on, quit. when we're talking to the police, yeah. she was like, "Yeah, like, well, he did quit the football team." And then they had the whole discussion Dad's of like, quit. What? I thought he was cut. I didn't want right. to make you angry. Why would I be angry? Right. Which I like how they make the scene. Well, we'll get to it then. Yeah. So after a bunch of um, awkward teenage flirting. What's going on? Hi. Um. I I'm Russ Thompson from next door. Um, oh, my brother has something to tell you. The younger boys, Ron and Nick, go upstairs to go find the baseball that crashed through the attic. And this is where it actually cuts. We don't see them shrink, but it's pretty much it's insinuated on yeah. what's going on. So then here is where we cut to the conference that we've been talking about this whole this whole time. And Wayne is in front of a big whiteboard trying to explain his whole process behind this possible shrink ray. Well, that's right, Professor Fredrickson, that all matter is made up of not only density, but of empty space. And if we can proportionally reduce the amount of empty space in any given object, we can thereby shrink the object. Uh-huh. Where's your proof? When Einstein came up with the atomic bomb, did they ask him to prove that it worked? You, Mrs. Linsky, are hardly Einstein. <laughs> I thought it was a bit bold to compare the Einstein concept of the atomic bomb without proof. But I mean, 
I mean, I guess. <laughs> well, plus, when we're working, considering how this laser has worked so far, does that really want to be the starting comparison <laughs> of, well, when Einstein invented the atomic bomb, yeah, I don't think that's really the one you want to start off with. <laughs> Which is dumb, because, like, if he... It, if he wanted to go for the atomic bomb approach, he has it already and it's in his attic. Yeah. yeah. He's got a death ray. It could be just yeah. up. It could be scaled up. I mean, again, like in a very different movie, these guys all heckling him at this science convention and then leaving during it could have gone very differently and ended with like a, you'll see, I'll show you all kind of deal. <laughs> Cut to their families uh, all over the living room. Puts it on the top of his car and drives it around town. <laughs> Just with reckless abandon. Quick, does anyone have a baseball? <laughs> I wonder if he got fired. I think he did. I think nobody does. He's like an independent. He just. He, he had a scientist working at a scientific place. <laughs> I don't, we do I don't science really here, Zelensky. Not a lot fantasy. Of science. <laughs> so let's see. We cut back to the older teenagers now wondering where the hell the younger kids are. They go upstairs and then they get blasted by the shrink ray as well. So now we get to see firsthand that this thing actually does work. And they're now about barely the barely taller than the width of a, an actual nail. Nick, what happened? We're all the size of boogers. And that scale is a lot smaller when you realize it. Because at first, like looking at it, like, oh, that's not that that's not that small. And then I looked at like the nearest nail that was hammered into something. I'm like, okay, that's that's actually really tiny. Should have had a banana. Why. They should have showed a banana. That would have been the better. That wasn't measure. discovered, I think, until the mid nineties. <laughs> <laughs> Bananas? <laughs> that was at a different science convention convention where they uh, introduced banana for scale measurements. You know where that actually started from? Wasn't that I imagery? don't. It was uh, <laughs> some guy was selling a TV. And the guy <laughs> needed to know, like, well, how big is the TV? I'm like, um, well, here, here's just a banana for scale. <laughs> it was like on um, no, I know. Craigslist or something. The I feel like the scaling on the kids fluctuates throughout the movie because right there, they're smaller than the size of the one of the nail heads by like a fair amount. But then it cuts later in the movie when they're like in the Cheerios. They show them like inside the middle of the Cheerio with his arms out touching both sides of the Cheerio. In which case, like if there was something big enough to fill the entire diameter of one of my Cheerios, it would be noticeable to the naked eye. Oh, yeah. And I wonder, too, how they're like, oh, they can't hear us because we're too tiny. Like, I don't I don't know. So, I mean, you can hear like you can hear a mosquito sometimes and they're. Not supposed to be heard. Yeah. I mean, the room was quiet, but even then, it's not like a lot of stuff was going on. It was just him and his cereal. You can hear like the bubbling inside the cereal when it, you know, when depending on what you what you're having. You need to call Mythbusters up and see if they can recreate a tiny person's we vocal cords. We should. Yeah, I'd be interested. So without any concept of time, Wayne just appears back at home as they were shrunk. And then he goes upstairs where the kids are, hoping to have this uh, whole thing undone. So the machine, which is still going haywire, um, dislodges the ball that was blocking its inner laser and is actually deactivated, of course, just as Wayne enters. So that could have been <clears throat> deadly for him at that point. <laughs> it could have been. Wayne enters the room. He He's confused at first because his normal thinking couch that he always ends up sitting on is actually missing. Which I'm surprised there isn't more red flags to this because why would your crummy old couch be just missing? Also, like but, when he walks into the room, it's not like it was off to it was literally in his peripheral where he tried to sit down. So how does he walk in the room, not notice it's gone to the point where he then tries to sit down in a missing chair spot? Yeah, really. There's, that, two, there's two large pieces of furniture gone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the room in, in a is small, small room. <laughs> yeah, like if I walked into my office and I go to sit down in my chair at my desk and I fall on the ground, it's like, no, that's on me. Like, be more aware. The best part is, is like he he goes to sit on the couch, he falls to the ground, and that's what kicks off his rage. <laughs> so maybe he does have an anger problem. And this is where 
the baseball bat comes back into play. This is all your fault. Five years. Not yet. It works. Zelensky, don't no, do it. Mr. Zelensky, yeah, don't even. I mean, I would assume if my ki- my couch was gone, my kids were missing, they took it to sell it to buy drugs, and <laughs> that would send me into a rage. Clearly. Because yeah, <laughs> drugs were just uh, <clears throat> running rampant during that those times. It's an upper-class neighborhood. It's, you know, there's an opiate problem. You know, and he was talking about using the shrink ray for, like, transportation for goods. Mm. So one kilo of coke now becomes the size of like a grain of dust. He could dismantle UPS and a FedEx with that that gun. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you could <laughs> with ship, or without the baseball. You could ship a piano for 50 cents. <laughs> yeah. <with the, laughs> I just process what you said. <laughs> so in a fit of rage, he, destroy, he, he destroys the machine. A bunch of parts flying everywhere. And then once he finally calms down, he cleans up his mess. But this also ends up cleaning up his children that happen to be scurrying around on the ground as they are trying to avoid all that fallen debris. I thought the debris looked good as a point, like it just to the effects and like production design. Like it looked believable when all that stuff was raining down on them, like the big computer chunks. The whole time they were shrunk, I felt everything looked I didn't have like the suspension of disbelief was always there. Yeah. Or, um, the dust I, and dirt that's like on the floor. Like, yeah. I never thought for a second, like this looks fake. And right. especially considering that the movie is like pushing 20 years old. I, um, do you want us to wait? Oh, no, that's fine. For the listeners at home, Tim has run to the bathroom. Uh, when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> you wanted to switch movies? <laughs> comes back yeah we're talking about jurassic park (laughs) (laughs) so everything is destroyed and that's when they realize that they have to bring everything back online so after looking through the computer and seeing that there's just absolutely no way they can get go through all the lines of code to figure out exactly what's going on they decide that they're just going to have to restart the system yeah then mr arnold it's like, hold on to your butts and just starts. And that's such a like a big deal to them. But I've never had an issue where I rebooted an entire system like that. And it's like a command prompt it's, it's turning back on. Like, really? You don't have any kind of automation thing where like you don't have to worry about it. And it'll just kind of start going on its own because what if everyone died and it's just like a, a, a blinking black dot on one monitor what the hell do you do with that that's why all their hopes rested on dennis and he cheaped out and dennis didn't do that kind no, of no, shit. he, he didn't wasn't cheap out enough. it was hammond that cheaped out right that whole no, no time. i'm saying they he, they cheaped out and dennis didn't want to do anything extra so well, that's what you, you get for sparing expenses yeah i hope you enjoyed this episode of screen refresh jurassic <laughs> park only the middle parts <laughs> we were just going to see how long we could go before he said anything. I think he would have let us go through the whole thing. I, I would have let you go through the whole thing. I mean, it's like the ongoing story that I tell of uh, when I was a kid and I was watching, um, what was it? It was the beginning of the Warriors on TV. And then I fell asleep. And when I woke up, the Warriors had gone off and then Rocky Warrior Picture Show would come on. <laughs> And for years, I thought they were the same movie that just takes a hard turn <laughs> a halfway through. Change. Yeah. Until I eventually this saw the actual now. Warriors, and I'm like, oh, wait, I, I know this movie. There's going to be that one part that comes up later on that gets so different. The, the transvestite is, sleeps with the man. He's an alien. Yeah. Um. When they do the, <laughs> can you dig it? Nick, actually, so, I thought you, I know you said that you were going to do that. I thought it was, it was just a joke. And then you started talking about the computer and I was so confused. I was like, what, <laughs> what is he talking? And then I remembered. Well, at first when I came back in and you were talking about like going through the lines of code and I'm like, I missed that part when they're trying to go <laughs> yeah, through the lines of code. To that's figure out the I was trying to think of the movie. Like, what the hell? And then I remembered what you said you were going to do. It's like, I actually don't <clears> think <throat> Rick Moranis worked with any code on this machine. That's all just mechanical <laughs> acting. So they end up getting thrown outside with the trash. They open up 
<clears throat> they use some kind of sharp object that's in it that happens to be the size of a blade, I guess. Nick always carries a knife. I guess so. Kids cutthroat. <laughs> they open it up and then they see the expanse of the backyard, which is as big as, I don't know, the Amazon rainforest in their size. We're now we're an inch tall and 64 feet from the house. It's the equivalent of 3.2 miles. It's a long way. Even for a man of science. Nick, I've got six hours to get home, get big, and get to the mall. Now get moving. Yeah, they said, what was it, uh, 10 miles? Rick Moranis later on says 10, but the I'm going to take the kid's side who does actual math to figure that, it out. That's true. The kid <laughs> has a better saying, track record. It's only three miles. I'm like, that's that's not bad. No. Yeah. You, you can, can do that in an afternoon easily. I but guess then hiking again, it, yeah. With like terrain, they're pretty much yeah. going on a three mile hike through yeah. uncharted territory, not to mention God knows what else they came across from the very edge of the backyard to the patio. Yeah, with obstacles, what would be like an hour, 15 minute walk would be uh, pretty daunting going mm -hmm. through thick bush. Although I still feel like the three miles on rough terrain still wouldn't necessarily take them over a day to get back if that were the case. I mean, unless there's a bunch of other interactions with insects and things we didn't see that caused a problem. Well, actually, now that I think about it, they, they did expect to be back before the end of the day. Like, oh, yeah, I'll be back in time to go to the mall later tonight. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, they just uh, they got, you know, obstacles carried by bees and whatnot. But side quests. So here is where we get to see the mom come home. And when she comes in, everything is amicable. But it's clear that she's not happy with Wayne's neglectfulness and unwillingness to clean the house. Because as she walks in, pretty much everything was as where the kids left it. So nothing was really done. We cut back to the kids and they're starting their journey. And that's when they decide, you know, <clears throat> let's lure the dog to like pick us up and then maybe we can just use the dog to go all the way back. So they climb up the nearest tree, which is really a flower stem. But um, Nick, as he's trying to climb, ends up falling into one of the nearby flowers. And then that is exactly when a swarm of honeybees comes by and uh, I don't want to say attacks him, but <clears throat> it, it starts trying to land on the flower that Nick is stuck inside of. And Just that's when his him, business. Yeah. Uh, Nick and Ron climb onto the bee and then they do that wild ride throughout the entire backyard, which was, I think still looks good. I, I thought so too. I was going to say, it's probably a really simple explanation for like the camera, like maybe just on a crane going in circles, but I thought it was really well done because it's a, it's a practical camera effect, mm -hmm. uh, not practical effect. The, <laughs> you know, the background, the background, <laughs> you know, they actually shoot, you know, the actual backyard and the camera flying all over the place. I'm like, they didn't have a drone. Like, it must just be on a crane or a steady cam or something, but it did yeah. a really good job with it. It reminded me of, um, like, Star Wars, and it's, I don't know why, but, like, especially Return of the Jedi, because I can definitely see the same technology being there with the uh, shooting on, like, with the back plate and then just having the, um, the frame, like, oh, God, I forget the actual technical terms for it, and where they're just able to effectively cut out the rest of it so that they can put it onto the plate for filming so that you can see what the hell is it called now i'm gonna have to look it up oh also while you're checking that when they're calling the dog and they're all whistling and then they make fun of little russ for not being able to whistle and amy quotes to have and have not with lauren bacall i feel like that's wait with who <laughs> lauren bacall who the uh, Lauren McCall and Humphrey Bogart, it's a... Uh... You know how to whistle. You just put your lips together and blow. I feel like I, I, that's I not something that. that the... Either of those kids would have known to <laughs> reference from their time. <laughs> you just slip a little bit of cinema culture into Amy's character. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. I genuinely didn't. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was, it was a weird like, uh, like sexual reference at first, and I was like, no, 
at Disney. I mean, no. No, we'll get to the French class bit. <laughs> that yeah. was so stupid. I think, honestly, out of all the jokes, that was probably the worst one. I just thought, yeah, I was a little surprised by it. I was surprised. And we'll get to it. I want to get ahead of it. It was uh, like in Return of the Jedi when they shot like all the TIE fighters against the the um, blue and green screen. They did the the mat erasing so that you don't see like the the lines, how it was shot against the plate. Oh, it oh, almost oh. reminded me of just the same kind of way that they did that. And they did and applied it with the, the honeybee. Yeah, At least that's what I thought. Anyway, I don't even know who did the special effects in this movie. Was it ILM? Um, all I know is that's the Disney ride that they should have done. <laughs> yeah, I don't they think sh- there was one, actually, now that I think of it. They should have done a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Disney ride between like the bee thing and then do the um, when they go down the leaves into the water and whatnot. Like that would have been a fun little zone of everybody walks around in this giant area looking small. Yeah. Yeah, Disney that would just be had- fun for the experience. Yeah, Disney had a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids experience at um, Hollywood Studios, but it was more of a like a jungle gym kind of thing. You could take your picture with Auntie. Yeah. <laughs> dead, alive Auntie or dead carcass Auntie? <laughs> the, the dead one with the scorpion stinger still in it. <laughs> also, with the, the bee ride and whatnot going on, I mean, this is the first time little Russ saved somebody's life. First of many. And then they keep cutting back to the parents and the parents are all still doing the, oh, where's so-and-so? Oh, I think they're not here. Nobody is concerned yet that like their kids are gone and then they check with the neighbors and their kids are also gone. Yeah. And it's like, oh, our kids don't hang out together. So they're all missing at the same time. <laughs> yeah, this is the part where she's, or the mom's like, I'm getting worried. I'm going to go to the mall and look for the kids. Why don't you stay here in case they come back? And then dad goes upstairs and that's my probably my favorite part because that's when he walks into the room. He hears a crunch as he steps on something. My chair. My couch. It works. And then he finally realizes like, oh, I fucked up. <laughs> oh, it I works. Up. And I fucked up big time. <laughs> yep. So now he realizes exactly what he needs to do. And he ended up throwing his kids out. Best case scenario, because I didn't notice him actually look any further inside the um, be funny if the whole time he thought, oh, I must have swept them up. They're probably in the backyard and they spend the next week looking when in reality they've been in the lab that whole time. Yeah, he didn't really <laughs> look around like. No, I he didn't even check his shoes. I would have checked my shoes for splattered kids. Yeah, really? So after the whole bee thing happens, they end up crash landing somewhere inside of that big jungle that's actually their backyard. And they're covered in corn pops. And that's when they have to try to figure out where the other set of kids are. Hmm? I was going to say, I think they're, they're covered in pollen. Yeah, I, I always, whenever I see oh, that, it I looks like corn pops. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, it, that's, yeah, that does look like was. giant corn pops. <laughs> so the two try to find like, it's pretty much finding two pairs of um, needles in a needle haystack, because I really don't get how the two would ever be able to find each other. Especially, like, what gives, if adults can't hear, or adults, if the normal size people can't hear them, why can they still hear each other from that far away? Yeah. How'd yeah, because, I mean, other? it's like miles and miles of wilderness, so. Yeah. That bee went all over the yard. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because, I mean, like, the for the relative size, the speed the bee was going, it's probably like they just picked you up and dropped you on the other side of town. With no GPS. The whole time that they're um, starting to walk, Ron and Amy are bickering at each other. And then if they don't fry him, they go to jail. Your mother, too. After all, she's the one who paid for it. That makes her an accomplice. You know what it's like in jail? I am going to tell you one more time to shut up. And then what? And then you'll smack me? You'll go to jail, too. I'll tell him after Big B ate my brother, you smacked me around. No jury in the world would fail to convict you. And at this point is when uh, Wayne is starting to look for his kids and... 
with the way that he's trying to go about it, he understands that he doesn't want to crush them by accidentally stepping on them. So he's trying to find the best way to kind of go through the entire backyard without actually stepping on it. So he what was he was using like stilts or something. Well, at first he was climbing the fence. Yeah. Like all along the fence on the side. Like we've all played the floors lava game. <laughs> Do you ever watch that on Netflix? No. I had watched a couple episodes, yeah. yeah it always pops not... up on recommended and I'm like, based on what? It's pretty brutal. <laughs> what have I watched that you're like, you know what you would love? <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. That's what you like the Conjuring? Their, How about Floor is Lava? Their original, anything in the original content doesn't even have yeah. to be, make sense. Like, do you like this Spanish language sitcom? Watch the Floor is Lava. Well, it's better than like the PlayStation or Xbox store. Oh, you like Grand Theft Auto? You must like the Barbie game. You, try you like out. games? You might like other games. <laughs> Thanks, Xbox. Thanks. Yeah, he's, it's more like he's playing the the backyards made out of my children. <laughs> well, we've all played that game too. <laughs> so he climbs down the uh, the fence, separating him and the neighbor's yard. What I don't, I didn't write down specifically. It's more of like um, certain beats, but. He accidentally turns on his sprinkler system because of a hose that happened to get snagged onto the. I guess he was using crutches as stilts. The stilts. He was. Yeah, right. And that's what activates the sprinkler system for their backyard. So being the size of, you know, the the head of a nail. Those little droplets are massive, massive waves of water that's crashing down on them. <laughs> But this actually ends up getting Amy to fall in a when it, when when you're that small. I don't want to say like a puddle because a puddle would be the size of an ocean to them. Could be dog piss, according it to it. Could us. be. <laughs> so she ends up falling into some kind of water and almost drowns. And then at this point is when the older brother of the two, Russell, <clears throat> he jumps in to save her. And at this point, Wayne finally shuts off the sprinkler. Again, little Russ. Like, that kid is quality kid. He's going to be a good dad to Amy's children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like a young Patrick Swayze. Always trying to save people. I mean, aside from the drowning thing, the rest of this looks kind of fun. Like, slide, jumping on a leaf and sliding it down the hill into the water and all of that. And escaping a deadly predator. Yeah. I mean, I mean other than that, it seems fun. <laughs> So then there's this like side plot where the mom is a real estate agent and she mentions to her husband that she's going to have two clients come by to pick up the escrow papers. But at this point, he's already like too busy trying to find, you know, their kids that are hidden in the backyard. So he's ignoring phone calls. She's actually trying to call him at this point from the mall to say that she didn't find anything. But just as she's calling, that's when the clients decide to show up and then he's they have no idea what he's trying to do. So here's this guy suspended by like a gurney with this weird pulley system so that he's able to suspend himself off the ground and just swing in a circle so that he can slowly scan the entire ground. I mean, kudos to him on getting that set up in such a quick and short period of time. But I really want to see him try to set up all of that stuff and having to put it on the ground. I want to see how careful he tries to be with him trying <laughs> to play like the floor is lava game, trying to just check the trash at the back of the yard. Yeah. Like how did he manage to build that entire contraption without actually standing in the backyard? Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, across um, at the, the other house, Russell senior um, meets up with his, I guess, best friend that they're all supposed to go on this big fishing trip together. Um, Russell has to actually tell them at this point that their whole fishing trip is going to be canceled. But that whole dynamic is just weird. I really do feel like they just they had a great idea of a let's shrink the kids and show an adventure. But they had no idea how to fill in the rest of the blanks. Yeah, I thought this was going somewhere else or like they'll leave and then they're going to come back or something. And it was just now nah, just five minutes and then they're gone forever. Yep. 
it showed some of his personality, but at the same time, it seemed like they had more of a rocky relationship than the Zelenskys did when it comes to their marriage. Because already, there's a ton of lying. <laughs> uh, neither of them are faithful with each other, and then it seems like, oh, we can't tell Russell because he's going to get mad, so let's do this instead. Yeah, the, the two friends, Don and his wife, also, they have like a weird city yuppie outfit look but then like rugged hardcore outdoorsmen <laughs> trailers and like their vests and whatnot so it's i don't know if this is just a case of like the the office guys going away for a weekend kind of deal or what but it doesn't matter they disappear and they never come back it was really unnecessary that didn't like add anything to the movie i guess other than to make the dad more mad that the kids weren't around but i don't know i mean it's an 80 dollar deposit on the line Bucks, May! Non-refundable! Those kids are grounded! <laughs> How much was yeah, it? Right. $80? $80. Back then, that's a lot of money. I'd be Back then, too. it's like $100. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so here is where, when we go back to the kids, the kids take a minute cleaning themselves with the worst joke about being... Where'd you learn artificial respiration? French class, kid. Oh. Even as a kid, I'm like, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Even as an adult, I was like, I don't get it. Did we go to very different high schools? I think so. <laughs> Maybe it's because I took Italian. I wanted Latin, but they canceled it. CPR is a very basic component of the French language. <laughs> also, I think you and I were supposed to originally be in the same Latin class, if I recall. Maybe, M yeah. My freshman year, your senior year, and then they ended up canceling Latin because the Latin teacher got fired. <laughs> did she? <laughs> she did, because they found out that, I guess, her side job was an adult dancer at... That's bullshit. No, it wasn't. No way. That's what I recall. Uh-uh. That was the, probably the rumor going around. So, yeah. anybody out there, you can do a little digging. <laughs> let us know. Email us. <laughs> I will say, after she started teaching Latin, a lot of people wanted to take Latin afterward, I will tell you that. <laughs> I just wanted to learn Latin. Could be truth to it. I mean, how else am I going to be holding my black masses? <laughs> They're not done in Italian. That's the closest thing, I guess. Though. <laughs> yeah. So here, after the French class... Um, they're all feeling good finally until they realize that they're all starving. You hear stomach growling, and just as this whole thing happens, um, they pretty much round the corner, and then they see this huge oatmeal cookie just looming on the horizon. I've died and gone to heaven. It's as big as a house! I saw it first! It's mine! To this day, even though I don't remember the movie that much since childhood, whenever I see these oatmeal cookies, I always think of the 50-foot version of it from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Is that what they... Do they say it's an oatmeal cookie? Pretty sure. And they, they show the like the logo on the box. I think it's like a little Debbie cookie or something, but it Oh. I always thought it was like a Twinkie thing because of the, the texture of the like the cookie part. But yeah, I remember the cookies you're talking about now, where it's like the two oatmeal cookies with the cream center. Yep. I was there a reference to like how where those came from and how long it's been sitting there? They're just like, let's eat. <laughs> what they're being contaminated with, they're going to enlarge them back to normal size and succumb to whatever it is that they ate. I get you, I get, I get you haven't eaten for hours, but you're not, you're not starving. <laughs> yeah. Funny. And, well, I, well, then again, the kids, they did skip breakfast. Well, at least the Zelensky kids skipped breakfast because Amy doesn't know how to cook. It was just toast. Yeah. Still though. She didn't think that I mean, was, there's been times where I'll get up in the morning, go into a meeting for work, work through my lunch, get home and then eat dinner at like seven o'clock. I wouldn't go outside and eat food off the ground at two. <laughs> well, in fairness, I don't know if the five second rule still applies when you're that small. Right. I guess they're, well, they're eating bits that didn't touch the ground technically. So yeah. You know, and they could see where all the dirt is because they're as big as dirt. But again, just how long has that been? Sitting there, I don't know. True. I mean, are they small enough to physically fight off the germs? <laughs> it could be. It's like Osmosis Jones. 
But speaking of bugs, this is the first time we see uh, the star of the movie, uh, a little ant. Well, no, we had some bugs for you. I'd show him. Quiet. To him, we're the bugs. If he finds us, he'll eat us. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. It's your cookie. I say we fight for it. Just one ant. They realize that they're better off attacking us, this thing. And then, you know what? Why don't we use this as like a form of transportation? So they kind of do like a carrot on a stick thing with the ant. And once they realize that it's not a deadly ant, that they're actually able to, you know, mount the thing. And um, <laughs> did you notice that they built like a a saddle? Yeah. Harness system <laughs> for this that thing? That had to have been Nick. That's no, no actually, I you know what? I think been, it might have been, been. I think Ron. it might have been Ron. Yeah. Oh, actually, that would make sense. He's got the nature sense. Mm -hmm. I still wish this ant just took one of them out while they were fighting it. Like it with, uh, well, actually, neither of you have seen it. Well, spoilers. In the original It, it kills one of the kids by crushing him with, uh, like, pincers. The original, you mean the Tim Curry? Yeah, the Tim it? Curry one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At the it's end, just, when it's been a while. he turns out to be a giant spider creature with crab claws and mandibles. Right. Because, the, sure. <laughs> the ant that while they're f trying to tame the ant, he wrecks all the boys like they get flung. Well, it's super strong. Several yeah. yards away. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's just it like the, the them. Thanos fight. <laughs> like Amy doesn't doesn't get thrown, but all the other boys get smacked and flung across the yard. Surprise seeing blood pop up in this movie for a Disney film. Because when they land right, from Russ. falling mm. off the bee, Ross is like bleeding from the mouth and um, Nick has like blood over his sweater and then they're all getting tossed around here and they're all scraped up. I feel like nowadays they wouldn't end up like they definitely wouldn't end up doing that. So I don't know if it was just something like they were a lot more lax in the 80s. Oh, they were. And it's and it's sad. It's gone. At most nowadays you get like bruises and stuff, but to see actual blood, even like It'll happen in a little bit, but like even seeing cigarette smoking, it's yeah, so terrible yeah. to see nowadays that it's weird actually seeing it in older movies, even right. if it's not like a huge like proponent of it. One of the side things that happens through the whole movie is like um, Russell Sr., the father, is always trying to smoke. And then every time he manages to take out his cigarettes, he puts one in his mouth. And then when he goes to light it, his wife or somebody is like, hey, you're not smoking, are you? No, I'm not. And then he puts it away. Also, he keeps his pack under his baseball hat. How is that comfortable and how does that hat fit? I don't know. As an ex-smoker, I never understood how people even use those soft packs because every time I had one, they would always get destroyed. And to be putting it inside my hat, I, that's just like I'm waiting for something bad to happen because it's going to slip out. You're going to step on it. Something bad's going to happen. Yeah. So they have an ant. They now have an ant. So now they can cover three times the distance. I forget the math that they said, but they're able to do much more distance than they could possibly on foot. They decide to rig up some kind of chariot system where one of the guys is mounted holding the carrot or cookie on a stick with the other kids being dragged on a leaf, which is pretty clever considering that, you know, they're essentially in the middle of nowhere. They don't have any kind of modern day tools to help them except whatever's on their person. They're able to craft something like that. I thought that was pretty cool. I feel they adapted fairly quickly. Was there a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show? Yes. I thought there was. Was it a cartoon? No. Yeah. Live action. Wait, Wait. was it really? <laughs> if I recall correctly, I remember Sunday mornings um, at like, I think 830 in the morning it would come on. And I would watch it because what else am I doing at six on a Sunday morning? They just accidentally get shrunk every day and have to <laughs> picture their way up. No, if I recall, it didn't like it was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but it hadn't it didn't have them getting shrunk. It was just like all the other weird problems and inventions and things that would happen. Uh, I remember there was one episode with some sort of like supernatural creature or something like that. Honey, the kids are ghosts. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yep. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show premiered uh, 1997, ended in 2000. Wow, I don't remember that at all. Up until the 2000s? Man. Yep, the 2000. Join us on our Patreon episodes where we 
<laughs> we'll cover each individual episode of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> oh, with the premiere episode, Honey, We've Been Swallowed by Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Turns into an inner space uh, sure. take. They had 66 episodes. That's better than some Fox shows. That's impressive. Yeah, some of these episodes, episode three of season one, Honey, I'm Haunted, Wayne invents something that could make your vision perfect, so Nick tries it out and can see anything, even the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we're stuck in the 70s. That was back, did you have, Did you pay for Disney? That was back when Disney was paid for, I think. Uh, I think so. I, don't, I forget when it became just a regular channel. Or cable Unless it was channel, another anyway. free preview weekend deal. But I'm pretty... <laughs> <laughs> you know how much I love that. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I think we might have actually paid for Disney because gotcha. I recall a lot of the the Disney Halloween stuff when I was a kid. Either that, or we didn't have Disney permanently; we only got it mm. like seasonally. Honey, they're after me, Lucky Charms. <laughs> Honey, they call me the Space Cowboy. Wow, these were just fire. <laughs> Honey, I shrink; therefore, I am. That's great. <laughs> Honey, I'm in the mood for love. I'm more surprised they're an hour long, too. Wait, where? Oh, wow. Yeah. Just for whatever reason, I was expecting like a Back to the Future cartoon style television show where they're more shrunk constantly all the time. But perhaps in another reality. I guess I think it's one of those Mandela effect kind of things that I'm thinking of. Honey, time is just a construct. <laughs> At one point in the movie, Nick starts to say that. Because they're talking about yeah. how long it'll take. And he's like, well, I mean, time is just a... And then they cut him <laughs> off. And it's like... <laughs> Unless he was going to say flat circle. We don't have the running uh, minutes for that uh, discussion. <laughs> so anyway, sorry I got sidetracked with uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the television series. So at this point, the kids scored a ride to get back home. And then Wayne is still searching for... Uh, the kids and even I don't know if this was the scene, but um, as they're walking along, the camera kind of pans up at the sky and then you see this huge face of Rick Moranis just filling the entire screen. So they're always just missing each other, though. I always wondered, like, maybe he really did look exactly where they were and he just didn't see them. Yeah. So at this point is when the wife comes home and he sees that the neighbor or she sees that the neighbors also called the cops. Um, trying to find their missing kids as well. So seeing as how they did, she decides, you know what, let me call the cops as well. And then here's where the wife catches up with Wayne. I called the police. What's on your head? I was looking for the kids. Where, in a coal mine? They're in the backyard. They are? Diane, I got something real important to tell you. That is the couch from the attic. You can see the marks where Cork chewed the arms. I found it on the floor. It's my thinking couch. Wayne. Are you trying to tell me you did it? It works. The machine works. Do the kids know? Well, yeah, the kids know. That's great. Well, it's not that great. Why? I shrunk the kids. What? And the Thompson kids, too. They're about this big. They're in the backyard. What? I threw them out with the trash. Funny you should ask. I do miss Rick Moranis. Like, seeing him act and, like, being more than just a weird guy with a magnifying glass in front of his face the whole time. It's fun seeing Rick Moranis. I do miss him. Yeah. I don't I don't know what capacity he's going to be in the reboot, but I guess he's involved in it. They said he's on the cast list. Hopefully it's not just by like not like a Jeff Goldblum cameo from Fallen Kingdom. Yeah, like I really hope it's not just like a oh, he's the mailman in the beginning of the movie or something like that. Or like it's a news clipping and see him receiving an award for having the shrink ray. Yeah, because they said um, Josh Gad is also going to be in it, so I don't know if he's going to be playing Wayne's part. That'd be weird. Or maybe he weird. plays Nick. <laughs> Although that would be... This kid sitting at the desk, 33 years old. Dad, can I help you out with your stuff? No, didn't, I'm too busy. Didn't they have Nick in the sequel, honey? I, or the, the three cool... Or no, yeah, the sequel, I blew up the kid. Honey, I blew up the kid, and then honey, Wasn't we the shrunk same ourselves. Actor? Was it the same actor? Was Nick or no? I think I'm not the, sure. I've only I seen think, it once. Yeah, I think the kids were all... A lot of the cast was the same throughout all of them. Yeah, I know the, the wife was the same. Yeah, it was the, the same cast, it looks like, for the most part here. 
Because I think the the Russells don't come back at all. It's just the Zelensky family. Right. The, the Russells uh, packed and moved directly after the end of that Thanksgiving dinner. They're lucky being shrunk was the only bit of it. In yeah. alternate reality, man, if that baseball were to hit the ground instead of gotten stuck in the machine. Like, it makes you wonder how many near misses they had with uh, death living next to the Zelenskys for years. <laughs> I mean, even Ghostbusters joke about it. How, like, how do you feel about a nuclear accelerator being strapped to your back, you know? <laughs> they pretty much had that right next to them that whole time. Yeah. I'm surprised the Zelensky line is still able to procreate. Hmm. So, let's see. The kids, um, after a while, I guess it's getting dark. They decide to um, release Auntie back into the wild, but it refuses to leave and continues to follow them. And then Wayne and Diane are now searching in the backyard together while Russell watches on smoking. So this is where the whole cigarette thing finally pays off. So he flicks the butt into their backyard and then the kids nearly get hit with it, go to check out what happened and then sees just the massive cigarette laying in the ground. And they use this um, to make torches for themselves as seeing as how it's getting dark. The only problem when they finally enlarge them, they're going to be on a two pack a day habit now. Yeah, really. So Diane, with them searching, looks over to Wayne and tells them that tells him that, you know, it's time that we tell our neighbors. And they do. And they don't really take the news lightly. Why didn't you tell us earlier? Well, until now, the machine just blew things up. Are you saying that that machine blew, blew up? up my kids? No, oh, no, 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 no. If the machine no. had blown up the kids, there'd be pieces of them everywhere. Wayne. I would have said... Sorry, I... Look, I'm positive about this, okay? The machine shrunk our kids. You're the one who needs to shrink, Zelensky. You are a nutcase, and I'll tell you something. I have got an air hammer in my attic, and if you did do something to my kids, there's going to be pieces of you all over the neighborhood! But I will admit that Rick Moran has actually got me to laugh through this part, especially with the line about the kids not having exploded, else they'd be everywhere. Like, I wasn't <laughs> expecting that line. <laughs> well, also, I like how he's like, you blew up our kids, and I was just thinking, nope, but wait till the sequel. <laughs> the movie does like to keep bouncing back and forth between the two. So as quick as we were to see his parents, or the, the the parents were now back at the kids, and here is where we bring him to a fallen Lego brick, which I always thought was cool, and Disney definitely like took that into consideration when they uh, did the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids section at their theme park, because being able to see something like this, being able to like play on it, and it's just like really cool to see, even if it's something as simple as like a Lego brick. Yeah. So they decide, like, this is the place where they're going to camp. So the older teenagers click, of course, you know, having shared many life endangering moments. Shared trauma does it for him. But as you're sharing this moment, this is when probably the only real danger through the whole movie happens. And that's when a normal scorpion shows up on the scene. Which, where, where do they live? Yeah. 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 It's not the desert. Also, before this happened, I liked two things. How the kids are lost out there. They're going to bed for the night. Which, as a parent, I feel like I wouldn't sleep until I find my kids. Rather than like, well, we looked for a while. Let's call it a night. <laughs> You'd be up all night. But Diane's concern is like, I don't know, I'm just... Worried about them being out in the, in the dark with Amy being with that little Russ. Yeah, that's the thing I'm concerned about. That the neighbor kid's going to mac on my daughter when they're both shrunk and lost out in my lawn. And I also like how Big Russ, or Big Russ refers to uh, Wayne as, This guy is a waste of skin. Which I feel like is just the weirdest insult. It's like borderline terrifying to think about. It's like a Buffalo Bill. Uh... Yeah. Like there's much better uses of skin than this guy. See Lamp my lampshades? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. yeah. Scorpions. I mean, by the by, by the neighborhood they live in, it's not the desert. Yeah, so the scorpion just wanders in from where? <laughs> yeah, like, where, where do they have this? Also, 
if they had a less luscious lawn, this would have been easier to find the kids, probably. Oh, yeah. Like, if they watered a little bit less, or if they were in a water ban area... I'm sure they like I'm sure Nick is probably like kicking himself in the butt for not having it done at this point. <laughs> because he pro- if they all die, he's probably going to think like this is all my fault. If I just mowed the lawn like dad told me to, we would have been found hours ago and we would we would all still be alive. <laughs> but now at this point, two out of the four kids almost died. So I'm surprised they didn't give us a uh, because Rick Moranis and his wife are out there just searching so much. They didn't give us anything, not really much of anything of them, like, you know, uh, glazing over the kids, not seeing them or just being so close and just missing them kind of deal. Yeah, there's like a couple times that it's like ships in the night as far as just missed them. But then we see later, unless they have something like... uh, like the magnifying glass or whatnot, then they're not just seeing them with the naked eye. So it's like, right. yeah, sure, they were directly in front of them, but there was no way they were actually going to see them. Yeah. I actually just had an epiphany in that that Lego brick is, I think it's a six studded brick. So for it to be that tiny, so it would be about like on webcam, it would be about this big. That means that that scorpion is smaller than my pinky nail. Or about the same size, like that is a baby scorpion. So how terrifying would it have been if after they fight the baby scorpion, the real scorpion shows up? <laughs> Get over here! <laughs> and it's just like cosmic terror just levels of them uh, <laughs> that would legitimately was... be like uh like War of the Worlds kind of like holy crap, this thing is massive. We have no way of surviving it's like lovecraftian all of them just go insane from trying to comprehend it i would say there's a (laughs) 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 just the thought of it i would say i will say that the scorpion effect i I guess it was had to be stop motion right but it looked yeah really good so one thing you guys should do if you are interested in watching it disney plus does have um a honey i shrunk the kids episode revolving around their props And trying to find long lost hidden props or just like, hey, you know, the history behind specific props. And Honey, I Shrink the Kids did have an episode because they wanted to restore the shrink ray. The shrink ray that's used in the first movie, the second and the third movie is literally the same exact one. Same one, yeah. Except that they added more and more parts to it. So when they wanted to put it on like display in a museum... They wanted to showcase it as the original. So in order for them to do that, they would have had to restore the version three back down to version one. And as they were going through the whole episode explaining, like, you know, the meaning behind it, they brought in Rick Moranis to do interviews and showed him original props from the movie, like his glasses and like some other stupid things here and there. But one of the other things, too, was how I think I didn't do my research. I'll apologize now. We accept it. But um, I think maybe Dennis Murin did this stop motion for it. I want to say it was him. But they showed the original um, ante as well as the stop motion scorpion in that segment. And I thought that was really cool to see. Yeah, I thought it was really well done. Also, for anybody interested, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids takes place in Fresno, California, where scorpions are rare, but not totally unheard of. Well, it's a good thing they found that neighborhood. I think it's just because I know that that neighborhood they're shooting on is a back lot, and it just looks like everywhere America. (laughs) Well, it was shot in Mexico City. (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was filmed in Mexico City. What? In the back lot of Mexico City's uh, Churubusco Studios. Wow. A lot of effort went into transforming it into a regular American neighborhood. That's what I was saying. It looks like it takes place in Fresno. I don't know. It just looks like everywhere America. Other fun fact, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was originally called Teeny Weenies. I'm glad they changed it. <laughs> it was uh, based on a comic strip that followed the adventures of tiny characters. So you could say it's a comic book movie. I mean, if you guys just want more fun fact trivia, other things you might not have known is originally the role of Wayne Zielinski was intended for Chevy Chase. I'm glad they changed it. That was, a, f- that was good, good change. I'm definitely glad they changed that. Yeah. So the stop motion was done by Phil Tippett. 
who also did work on Jurassic Park. I'll say that I know that name. Yeah, he um, this was one of the last big hurrahs with stop motion animation, because when I watch this, I don't even think that it's stop motion at this point in time. Yeah, it's just 100 percent. I believe this is a scorpion attacking. Yeah, it looks, it looks awesome. Sound design, maybe not. It was weird hearing. <laughs> yeah, the ant dying like a like a like a fallen horse or something. It was brutal. Gets stung well, in like the back of the neck. In the um the original, <laughs> it's like the scene in Saving Private Ryan. Um, like the in the original <laughs> script and I guess the novelization, Auntie didn't die. Auntie survived, gets enlarged to like a horse size, and then shows up at the end in front of the science guys that were at the convention that were talking about how he's crazy. Oh. And then they see this giant ant. That would have been a much better joke ending than the, the one they ended with. I thought it was kind of dumb. But French class. Yeah, that was like, well, why call that back? <laughs> Bring back Auntie. Yeah. That would have been a much better like joke ending. Agreed. Sticking it to the dumb old science man who don't listen. So Auntie does die, unfortunately. Yeah, I was actually trying to remember. I was like, oh shit, does the ant actually bite the dust here? And it was... It was rough. I wasn't totally invested, but it was like, uh, it was kind of sad for this level of movie. Well, plus I thought it was going to be like a quick, oh, you see the stinger pop down and then it's done and it's like no you actually see it go into the back of its neck and leave a hole <laughs> he's like, I was like oh. ouch Painful i'm more amazed brutal. that after like in a fit of fury upon seeing their brother and you know fall in the midst of combat they rallied up and decided like oh let's just take this thing out with spears like that's all right good luck well go little raw Ro- or go ron for the fact that he Pulls off like the Leonidas spear throw and <laughs> yeah. gets the thing dead in the eye. It's like a cyclops, yeah. But they managed to drive away that scorpion and they, uh, <laughs> Ron decided to set up traps, which I don't know what the hell they would have done, but, uh, set up <laughs> traps in front of a little Lego brick as they all slept, huddled together in the single one tube. Just when you think everything is all set and, you know, they're just going to continue on their journey, that's when. That kid comes back. Yeah, the return of Tommy. To play with the RC mower. I would have had fun. I just don't like the fact that he shows up and just grabs, like, goes in the backyard, grabs it, starts it up, and just starts. It's like, you don't alert anybody <laughs> that you're there. Like, I yeah. I mowed lawns as a kid, like, around town. I didn't just, like, show up and start. You would kind of talk to the homeowners first. Yeah, do you, want me to, do you want me to cut it like center field in Yankee Stadium or just a regular cut? You know, you got to ask what they want. <laughs> the fact that he's as late as he was, I'm surprised he even had the nerve to go up because he promised the kid, yeah, I'll do this later on today. I just got stuff to do. And then he shows up the morning after. <laughs> even worse, what if he showed up directly after the scorpion fight? It's like pitch blackout. They just kill the scorpion <laughs> or fight the scorpion. <laughs> then you hear the mower start up. <laughs> It never ends. <laughs> so with the kid, so with the kid using the remote controlled lawnmower, it becomes like the way that vacuum um, with the way that lawnmowers work, it sucks up everything beneath it so that it can cut up the grass. So the kids realize like, oh, no, the lawn's getting cut. So they try to seek shelter, which when you know, you're the size of like one of the lines on a ruler trying to run away i think is funny but in the midst of their panic they're able to find some kind of hole that i guess it was a an earthworm that had dug just happened to be right next to them this whole time they run inside but at this point the suction from the lawnmower is just enough that it sucks up or tries to suck up the kids into the blades and of course, for a moment of uh, dramatic tension, this is the exact moment where the kid, that's Tommy, is uh, um, caught by his parents, or their parents, the owners of the house, that should have been consulted first, like any normal, sane <laughs> lawnmower child. Like a young entrepreneur. Yeah. They realize what's going on as they wake up, and like, oh no, the lawn is getting cut. So they run outside, they stop him, but they don't shut off the lawnmower. So, of course, you see the spinning blades of death 
spinning just over it, it's like it reminds me of like that intro scene to twister where the guy is <laughs> hanging on for dear life as he's trying not to get sucked up by the incoming tornado well i, I like how i thought it was going to be like oh they're going to shut it off in the nick of time it's like no it's still on they just get really lucky because they get sucked up and then blown out the side before they shut it off with how small they are i don't think it would have mattered I legitimately think that they would have probably just missed the blades and would have gotten spit out in the other direction anyway. Yeah, because I think it's still, it's very nebulous as to their actual size until you start playing around with, like, that Lego sizing and whatnot. Yeah. They're as big as they need to be for whatever plot armor is required for that scene. <laughs> so the, the parents stop him. Tommy! 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 Stop! Stop! Get over here! Tommy! 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 Um, I don't remember what actually happens to the kid. They're just like, no, you got to stop that. They turn off the thing and then the camera focuses on the kids the whole time afterward. Um, I was really hoping that like when they started up the mower, Ron would throw another spear and take Tommy out. <laughs> <laughs> just like a little dart in I mean, the eye you... or? No, just dead. <laughs> I mean, he can easily he could, hide the body. He, yeah, you could never prove what happened. I don't know. That would be a weird investigation. They have to shrink him and bury him in uh, that earthworm hole. Oh, the, wow, yeah. It's a perfect crime. It would be. Actually, yeah. Forget Looper. This is how they do hits now. <laughs> shrink him and kill him. Just put him down the dish disposal or the garbage disposal. Yeah. And then we come to the Cheerio scene. So after stopping the child immediately, Wayne decides, you know what? I'm going to have cereal. <laughs> so at this point the dog whom happened to be super close to them enough that they can actually hear that they're screaming for the dog they climb onto it and the dog collects them and then the dog runs into the house and um, nick holding on for dear life to the dog's fur slips and falls into the cheerios bowl this is where the sizing kind of got confusing how did, how did he me. get I must have blinked again. How did he get from the dog into the cereal? I think the dog jumped on top of the table, I thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So just as Wayne Zielinski is about to eat his own son, Quark <laughs> bites his leg. He goes to look down, and then I guess his eye manages to catch the fact that there is a small child in his cereal. And all is well with the world again. Oh, Daddy, Daddy. It's Nick! Huh? Nicky! Oh. Pointing at something. What? Look, it's the rest of them! Yes. But now it's the realization that, you know, he didn't even know that this was going to work. The whole time throughout the whole movie, my shrink ray doesn't work. So then he wants to go from shrinking to blowing up. And now he's done the blowing up thing properly, just not in the context of which he needs. So it was a really big gamble to show that, like, hey, the, what were their last names? The Thompsons? Yeah. They, uh, he brought them over and then he's showing them like, look, my shrink ray works. Here are your kids. Look through this microscope and you could see them. They're waving. They're like, oh, you know, wow, my kids are now shrunk. So that was really trusting of them to go on a live human test without testing it out on something else first. Yeah, well, I was really confused. That's why I was that like, part. Big Russ really does care about these kids to be like, do it on me. <laughs> but it's... Why couldn't he just keep doing it on, on inanimate objects until it starts to work? <laughs> that was the Yeah, because I mean, it's not like, oh, we have a working test on inanimate objects. Now we have to move on. It's like, no, it yeah. still hasn't worked on those. Right to human trials. You know, yeah. and plus, now that I think about it, like the baseball was what helped the machine work when it comes to shrinking something. But what if the baseball or the, the laser had to be unobstructed for it to blow something up, like to full size or like larger than what it should be? Yeah, they, they really rushed through the trials. <laughs> it's called the baseball must work. Let's just move right to people. That's probably why they cut his funding. That's why there's tension at home. <laughs> oh, Rick yeah. is too much of a maverick. Yeah, the son died in trials. Uh, Wayne Jr. Yeah, Wayne Jr. <laughs> <laughs> he died in science trials. <laughs> so they test it out on Russ Sr. And it works. Thankfully. He's able to shrink down to, you know, whatever minuscule size. 
and then shrink them back up to normal size. They all, I was just kind of taken aback at their normal reaction to like being shrunk to an extremely small size. Like, well, I guess this is it. <laughs> I guess like, it works. I guess it I'm works. small now. Yeah, cool. Same with the dad. He gets shrunk. He's like, hey, I'm down here. <laughs> it's just... I think it has a, oh, a weird implication too. When they unshrink him and his hat is like too big, so the hat kind of got enlarged too much. I think it has like dangerous implications for what could be going on inside their inside their body with their <laughs> organs and such. It reminds me. I, mean, I don't it, know if it might have worked the... in his favor. <laughs> 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 this could, that would be the that. ending joke like the wife like oh. <laughs> that's French been the class joke. <laughs> but I don't know if you read Timeline by Michael Crichton the, the way they go back in time they essentially like get unpacked unbuilt essentially and rebuilt in a different time and dimension oh like wind zip yeah exactly they get unzipped and rezipped and like the one guy dies because he does it so much and like it doesn't perfectly rebuild him each time he didn't pay for the trial so he gets more and more imperfect <laughs> yeah <laughs> winrar but that's what it just reminded me of that like oh like so the hat's slightly big so just down the line like you find out you have cancer from being shrunk and large and shrunk. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah his brain pressed against his skull and he died at least it's not like um the fly where they're being shrunk and enlarged with all of their clothes on their body. <laughs> you would think that they would actually be naked because else when they like, what's the machine to know the difference between this piece of cloth that needs yeah. to be enlarged versus your flesh. Right. They get enlarged and the clothes are inside them. Like, Oh, <laughs> and get suffocated. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a, I think they did it for a joke, but I think it has much more nefarious or dangerous implications. So they just, they got really lucky through this whole uh, thing. Yeah. They were um, extremely happy that it worked, which <laughs> is an understatement. And this kind of calls for a truce with uh, between the two families, because throughout the whole movie, they were kind of at war with each other, especially with, um, you know, the kids almost being thought to have been destroyed with the whole shrinking machine. Cause even at first when Wayne and um, Diane try to explain it to them that like, Hey, your kids are in our backyard the whole time. They're just, you know, the size of the width of a dime. They didn't believe them at all. I'm actually amazed. They went over the second time, even with the proof. Cause I mean, they had proof the second, the first time that, Hey, your kids are shrunk. Like, yeah, whatever, buddy. There were a couple shots of the mom. I think she was kind of like, I think this is real. She never said it, but... Well, so if somebody shows me a tiny couch and is like, that's why your children disappeared, I'd be like, sure. I don't know. <laughs> Doll furniture. <laughs> all in all, I, I still think that the Thompsons were very reasonable in this whole film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. They were like probably we... the most normal thing about the whole movie, too. Yeah. It's like we've established that they're the, the normal, more reasonable parents. So it makes sense why they immediately packed and moved before the sequel occurred. I don't blame them. Get the hell away from these people. Hell but I'm yeah. glad this trauma ended up fixing the Zelensky marriage. At least I hope so. Yeah, for whatever it was that was ailing it. Well, before they do the lawnmower scene, when they're outside, or they're, she goes upstairs after she like wakes up the next day and he's sleeping in the attic. And she looks at him and she's like, I love you, Wayne Zelensky. It's like... You guys clearly, you had a fight the other day to the point where you left the house and went to your parents. And then you come back to find out that your husband accidentally, his machine went wild, shrunk your kids. You may never get them back. At what point did you guys make up during all of this? <laughs> and she saw the possible checks in her future. Yeah. She's like, we can <laughs> buy true. more children. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just even aside from the fact of the shrink rate thing, it's like, if he can enlarge food, he solved world hunger. Yeah. Can he enlarge, like, oh, I found a hunk of gold, enlarge it, and now all of a sudden he's a millionaire? <laughs> I was just thinking that, like, what if you took, like, a flake of gold and enlarged it? Would that, in turn, make its value more? 
I mean, I assume yes, because now it, it goes from having like, oh, I have an ounce of gold to I have like 14 pounds of gold. You have to, you definitely wouldn't, I, that, at that point, you don't tell anybody about your invention because well, no. then the value of gold dramatically just collapses. <laughs> the entire yeah. economy just goes to shit. I mean, at that point, he might as well just enlarge himself and hold countries hostage. <laughs> I now control Fresno. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Have fun. Whatever you want, guy. Just don't <laughs> step on us. And this is where we finally see the Thanksgiving dinner that they abuse the power of the shrink ray. And instead of shrinking the dinner, they enlarge it. So they have like a 50 pound turkey resting on the table. And then also a, a huge dog treat for the dog. Which, like, I love how s after all this potential tragedy, why would anybody feel comfortable being like, yeah, let's now use this for fun? <laughs> Unless it, I wonder if it's like time has passed and this isn't like the next day. This is like, oh, it's months from now and they're still friends. I'd imagine it was like a week later because the kid can't be like sitting on French class for the next like six months. <laughs> And then it finally hits him, like, oh, I get it now. Like, really? Hey, wait! I get it! French class! <laughs> it's just been keeping him awake at night. <laughs> yeah, really kind of a... French class. It's not the joke to go out on in this. Yeah, I wish they kept the anti thing, like... Yeah. That would have been a good ending. At the... At Fred... French class, we now get credits, and that's it. That's all she wrote. So, coming to the end of this, after not seeing it for ages, so you still stand by it's not as good as you remembered, or? I think it's just more of a childhood spectacle. And um, anything dealing with the adults is kind of meaningless, and it's really just um, an adventure of kids going through their backyard the size of a, you know an ant and then everything else is just kind of being thrown in there to fill in the blanks. So, I mean, that whole adventure just for what it is and seeing everything that goes on still stands pretty close to me as I remember all the memories watching it growing up. But in the movie itself, I mean, I don't think it's that memorable as a movie in itself, like everything encapsulated, but the whole shrunken adventure. Yeah, that stands out. And I still think it's done pretty well. Yeah, I think all the set pieces are pretty effective. Like the character relationship stuff, it's like, yeah, it, it just has to be there because you you need that stuff, I guess. But the spectacle of it, I think, holds up. And I thought it was pretty solid overall, just as yeah. a kid's movie. Like, I'm not like sitting here thinking I'm going to watch this maybe ever again in my life. But yeah, um, I was like, oh, was, I could see why that could get a big release and why Disney put money into it because it's a good, good concept. And a lot of just like iconic images from the movie itself, like especially with like Rick Moranis using the magnifying glass over the cereal like that will always be stuck in my yeah. head from now until I die. My wife, uh, my wife, when she realized I was watching this movie, she's like, oh, the cereal part. That's the one I think I remember the most. And I was like, yeah, that actually is only uh, a minute and a half of the movie. And it happens right before they uh, get the found. And she was yep. like, wow, I did not remember that at all. But it is one of the yep. most, with the, the large props, you know, one of the most memorable parts, I agree. Yeah, the sequel, I only remember watching like maybe a couple of times, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. And then Honey, I Shrunk There Ourselves, I think that one wasn't even a theatrical release. I think that yeah. one was just like straight to DV. I didn't see that one. TV. And that one wasn't great, but it did bring back the whole principal cast, or at least Rick Moranis came back for that one. I think that was being one of his last movies, too. Yeah, I think it's towards the end of the ones he was acting in. And then um, I think the last thing I actually remember him doing was um, Brother Bear. He did one of the voices. Mm. I think that was like 2000. Oh, the moose. Yeah, like the Canadian moose. Moose Wait, guys, what? right? The Canadian moose guys. Oh, no. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they might have. He might have done that in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought you meant the movie was about a Canadian moose. He's going to be like, no, I'm pretty sure it was about a brother bear. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I think I appreciated the movie more now than I did as a kid. 
And it still just blows my mind the that Stuart Gordon and Brian Usna were two of the ones with the story on it. Although the um, the other writer, because um, it was a story by Stuart Gordon, Brian Usna, and Ed Naha. Ed Naha also did Troll, which you know as Troll. And um, also did Dolls, which was another movie directed by Stuart Gordon. Dean, but I'm, still guess, mad at, I'm still mad at you for making me watch that. By the way, Which, oh, Troll Two. Yes, it's completely unrelated. You don't piss on hospitality. <laughs> That's no, a but, great, um, great movie. <laughs> the so they did the story, but the actual screenplay was Ed Naha and Tom Shulman. Which they did this. They also the same year did Dead Poet Society. They did What About Bob with Bill Murray, Medicine Man with Sean Connery, and Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag with Joe Pesci. All in all, top to bottom, they had a good crew on this movie. Yeah, it's a solid kids movie. I mean, it still got trampled by Batman, but... <laughs> I think that's a mark of honor to be like, I got trampled by Batman at the movies. Well, it's no Frozen. That's true. And Batman had a... Batman was kind of a big deal. So I was going to say, that's like... I mean, it was Adam West's Batman, and then Years of Nothing, right? And then... Burton, right? Yeah. That was the NX Incar live action in Because people were going to see whatever movie the trailer was showing at without any intention of actually watching the movie. I forget what movie it was, but especially th this was before the internet and there was no television trailers for it. So it's like, uh, let me let me look it up quick, but just like throwing a movie out at the top of my head, like, do you know Bonnie and Clyde has the trailer for the new Batman movie? People would go in troves just to see it and then walk out. They wouldn't even watch the actual theatrical movie that was accompanying the trailer. Like yeah. it was a huge deal. Which I get like nowadays. Yeah, the Internet. But back in the day where it's the only time you get to see these new things or these new snippets are going to the beginning of another movie. I feel like that was prime theater hopping days. So all in all, I I enjoyed yeah, it. Good. Flick. I probably won't go back and watch it again. Yeah, like I say, soon, if, if, like, I, if I catch it somewhere, I don't know where I would even catch it, but I probably won't choose to go watch it again. So everybody, final thoughts. You guys got anything else you want to add on to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids before we put a nail in this? Bring back Rick Moranis. Yeah. I think it was cool revisiting this specific movie because this one was definitely it never left my childhood and it always or it o it only stayed with my childhood um, and it never left it in the sense that since watching it, it has been like 20 plus years since I've seen the original one. So seeing it with a fresh set of eyes, it was cool to relive a lot of the old memories and seeing everything and then fully understanding the movie from start to finish as an adult. It was really a cool experience. Yeah. I think this is the first one we've done for the show that it's been long enough that I watched it again, literally with like a, a new take on the movie or like a new understanding of the movie. Like, okay, we cover predator, but I've seen predator every year or every couple years since childhood I'd never seen Surf Ninjas. I had never seen Little Monsters. So coming into this, it's the only one that I really had two very distinct takes on over the years. So mm. I think overall, I, I had fun with it. It was cool. Um, especially it still holds up in terms of special effects when like so many movies now, even if they were made like five years ago, like watching the original Iron Man versus Iron Man now you can see how far the technology's come since. Oh, and yeah. it's only been like 10 years or wait, no. When Iron, Iron Man, Man 1 at 2008, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, it's 15 years versus like still, they put a lot of money into Iron Man 1. And, um, you know, the technology at the time made it look amazing. But when you watch it now, you can clearly see like that's definitely CGI. There's no yeah. photorealism. This, it's like everything is a real thing there is barely any like cgi through the whole movie and if there is anything that's been used to tweak certain visuals it was a real thing being like you know just like green screened over a plate practical effects they hold up yeah man mm -hmm. okay so thank you everybody for joining this episode of screen refresh 
Find us at Instagram at Screen Refresh. Find us on Twitter at Screen Refresh. If you want to shoot us an email, ask us questions, just tell us any stories or anecdotes about the first time you might have seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, or just uh, any stories about the first time uh, your favorite movies you saw as a kid, feel free to shoot us an email at screenrefresh at gmail.com. And thank you for hanging around. See you next time. Have a good night, everybody. You're still here? Go home. It's over.